We have the fraction 7 eighths. Top number is the, a word you rarely use, well, probably more than subter, hender, menu in. Yeah, top is the numerator, and the bottom is the, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm going to use the I can spell it that way. Denominator. I'm sure you all knew that, but we're afraid to just jump in. There. A couple things you have to be able to do with these fractions. Uh, one of them is list from least to greatest. Let's say you have three six, three fifths, and three eighths. Three six, three fifths, and three eighths. And I asked you to put them in order from least to greatest. Give me somewhat of a thought process. By the way, the days of drawing out circles and shading them in should kind of be passed for you, only because those are only as good as nice circles that you draw. You have to draw perfect circles and cut them in perfect pieces for it really to be accurate, and that's kind of a tough thing to do. You don't, you should never really have to do that anymore, so kind of get that out of your mind. In this, how do I know if you're looking at this, the quickest, simplest way to try to figure out what's bigger or smaller in those fraction things would be what comma? Yeah, compare them to a half. Compare to one half. Well, sometimes that's the trick right there. Three sixths, how does that compare to one half? It is a half. Three fifths. It's more than half because 3 is more than half of the bottom. So in math, we would write it like this. This is greater than 1 half. 3 eighths is, because half of 8 is 4 and 3 is less than 4, that means this is less than 1 half. So that's really all you have to do to compare them. You know that this one has to be smaller, smallest, because it is the only one that's less than 1 half. This is the same as 1 half. And this one is greater than one half. What if you couldn't tell by that? What would be the next step? You know? Andrew? You could maybe put them all in the same denominator. Yeah, you probably have to make equal bottoms on that. What would be your common denominator of 6, 5, and 8? Anybody? Six, five, and eight. Common denominator. Bonus point. David says, I don't think eight goes into three or six. So, what's the smallest number that six, five, and eight are going to? Anybody? Four ones? One twice? Landon? Three? Eight doesn't go into three. Not the smallest number that goes into them, the smallest number they go into. For example, if I were adding. 3 fifths and 3 eighths together, my common denominator would be 40. Smallest thing we both want to do is 7 greater than 40. Plan? No. No, it's not the smallest number that goes in the them. It's a small number. Let, let, let's look. You remember adding fractions before? 3 fifths plus 3 eighths. What would be my common denominator? It wouldn't be 1. This would be 40. But now I have to add a 3 sixths onto that. What's the smallest number that would go into those three? Six doesn't go into 40. Six times six is 36 times seven is 42. Taking a shot at it? Oh, yeah. well, we'll come back to that later. It would have been 120, but that's the thing there. How about this problem? Um, uh, 30 test. Uh, 30 questions on the test. Write this down. There were 30 questions on the test. 30 questions on the test. One third of the questions were true false. One third true slash false. Uh, Two fifths were multiple choice.
and the fifth is multiple choice. Uh, how many questions were true false? How many multiple choice? How many were true slash false? How many multiple choice? Thoughts on how we do that? Again, you're getting to the point where, you know, there's a couple different ways to skin the proverbial cat here. Apparently the cat is not being skinned quite very well. Andrew! No, no, you wouldn't have to. That would be if you're adding together. We're not really adding here. Somebody, come on, get your seventh grade now. Anybody know? How would I find out what one third of 30 is? Maggie? You could. One way would be to do the fraction box. So you draw this. There are 30 questions on the test. I want to know what one third of them would be, so I cut it into thirds. So each box stands for 10. Correct. So how many true and false questions were there? Ten, because it was one of the thirds. How many would be multiple choice? You could do the same thing. You can't use this box because I didn't have fifths down there. So I'll do my little box. Cut it into what is it, two fifths? One, two, three, four, five. How much would be in each box then if I take 30, cut it into five equal pieces? It's been a long summer. We can't do the math there. Landon? Six. Six. So two fifths would be. What is two fifths then? Alex, 12. Now, is there an easier way to do that, kids? One that isn't quite, because I can guarantee in real world situations, you probably wouldn't sit down and draw these boxes. You get to college and the professor says, hey, find seven eighths of you know, 220, 240. You're not probably going to buy that and go to buy fraction boxes. I, I'm going to tell you the key word is this. You wanted to find one third of 30. Did you miss that? One third of 30. Maggie? It's just multiplication. What is one third times thirty? You get you can cross cancel if you like. You get thirty over three, and that equals ten. But the pictures are a good representation of that. Most people say do it at that point. No, nah, you don't have to. Not that uh, And then look at your books on page thirty-three, please. Open up to page 33 so I can light up your world as best as it can be. Doesn't it feel hot in here? Not as hot as outside. Is it buggy? Stifling? What adjective would you use, Grace? You can't use the one I did. Hot. Hot is such a generic word. You can't just say hot. Stifling was a good word, huh? Alex would say it's human. Oppressive would be a good word. Humid is, humid is humid. Humid has not got any bad connotations. You want a word that says it's not nice to be outside. Some people like humid. Oppressive. Blistering. Blistering would work. Taylor? Boiling? Scorching. Super hot. Boiling. Uncomfortable. Melting. Melting. Look, children, at um, page 33, practice letter C for me. Letter C, and see if we can't make heads or tails out of this. If you read C, it says, Dear old Greta drove 288 miles and used 8 gallons of fuel. Greta's car traveled an average of how many miles per gallon of fuel? Somebody, somebody tell me what you think you would do there. And then I will tell you the key and how you know that's what you should do. 
and I'll tell you this again in another day or two or whatever there. Kabran says, you divide. How do I know I divide and how do I know what I divide by what? Brick Kel. Thank you very much. It wants to know this. It said miles per gallon. And I think I've mentioned this before. The word per is a fraction bar. You are going to put how many miles you went over how many gallons it took. So there's no doubt there where the numbers go. I know I went, what, 288 miles, and it took me how many gallons? Let's say eight. Eight gallons. And then I just want to do that division. Eight goes into 288 what? Three is 2436. And you could write it in, sometimes we don't write it in fraction form, we just do MPG because you know that Chevy is the MVP of MPGs. Have you heard that point? Yes. Just me. Just me. Great.